Hello, I'm Dr. Randall Seacrest, your host for eOrthopod TV. Today, we'll be talking remotely with Dr. Walter Short. Dr. Short is an orthopedic hand surgeon who practices at the Syracuse Hand and Wrist Center in Syracuse, New York. Dr. Short received his medical school training at the SUNY Health Sciences Center. He then completed an orthopedic residency also at the SUNY Health Sciences Center and a fellowship in hand surgery at Yale University. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Short. Thank you. Dr. Short, what I would like to discuss today is a difficult topic for both physicians and patients sometimes to understand, and that's the concept of injuries to the ligaments of the wrist. I think we're very comfortable with talking about ligaments or ligament injuries in the knee, uh, ankle, shoulder, but, but not so much the wrist joint. For a long time, I think that the focus has been on fractures of the wrist. And as we began to understand more about all the complex arrangements of the ligaments of the wrist and the multiple bones that were involved, we have developed a clearer understanding of how these ligaments function and, and sometimes how they don't function when we injure them. Now, my understanding is that you've had a lot of experience in doing both research and treating ligament injuries of the wrist. And in our discussion today, I, I hope to clarify what a patient needs to know about a wrist sprain. I suspect that you and I are skeptical that there is such a thing as a, a true wrist sprain. We're worried about, uh, number one, has the wrist been fractured? And number two, if there is no fracture, but there is significant injury to the wrist, what ligaments are injured and how can we best uh, treat those uh, injuries? To begin the discussion, can you give me some background of how you came to your understanding about how wrist ligaments work and, and how they can be injured? Uh, I became interested in uh, wrist uh, ligament injuries uh, when I was doing uh, my uh, specialized training in hand surgery. Uh, and then uh, when I uh, was at the medical school, I started to do uh, research on uh, wrist ligaments uh, because it uh, fascinated me that I would see patients in the office who would come from the emergency room after having a fall or an injury. Uh, they didn't have, uh, they had x-rays, but the x-rays were normal and there were no fractures, but they still had significant pain and disability, which never seemed to really go away. Uh, so I became uh, interested in why these people had pain, why these people uh, continued to suffer. So we started to do research uh, which uh, involved uh, a lot of uh, biomechanics. Uh, we did research in the lab where we had uh, specialized equipment to evaluate uh, uh, three-dimensionally how the bones moved, uh, what happens when you uh, cut a ligament, where, what happens when you cut several ligaments, and uh, we were surprised by the fact that, uh, first of all, the wrist is a very complex and probably the most complex uh, joint in the body. Um, the wrist itself is made up of eight little bones which are um, could also could be considered sort of like ball bearings in an engine, but the ball bearings are not smooth and round like normal ball bearings, but are irregularly shaped, uh, and each bone has a different shape. In order for this complex uh, uh, set of bones to move, they need to be connected uh, with multiple ligaments which connect one bone to the next as well as uh, rows of bones uh, to each other. And it became uh, apparent to me that uh, although the x-ray can be normal, there can be severe damage to the ligaments in the wrist which make the bones move abnormally which wouldn't be picked up on normal x-ray. So that was the start of my uh, experimentation into wrist ligament injuries. Um, what sort of symptoms do you see in patients when they have had a wrist ligament injury that may tip you off that this is not simply a wrist sprain, but is persistent and is going to cause a problem? Is there anything specifically that patients should look for to suggest that maybe this is a more serious injury than a wrist sprain that is going to recover on its own? Uh, I think the uh, biggest uh, 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 indication to the patient is uh, uh, swelling and pain in the wrist uh, after an injury. And uh, 
most of these injuries are, are not trivial. I mean, uh, if you uh, sort of slip and fall, and people do get wrist injuries, but people that uh, are uh, uh, involved in motor vehicle accidents, they fall from a height, uh, they fall on the ice, uh, they fall with a certain speed, uh, that can, uh, those are the people that should be worried. If somebody falls and they have pain which lasts uh, more than several days after the injury, and they've gone to the emergency room and they have normal x-rays, I think those people need to be watched or to be evaluated by someone who has an interest in wrist, wrist injuries uh, to, to be evaluated to, to make sure that uh, they re, uh, recuperate uh, satisfactorily. Well, let's talk a little bit about how you as a hand and wrist specialist would evaluate a patient that you're suspecting may have had a serious wrist ligament injury. How do you do that in the office? I first ask them how they uh, were injured. I ask them the location of their pain. I evaluate to see where, the, where, where they do have swelling or where they don't have swelling. There's certain clinical signs uh, to uh, suggest that certain ligaments may be damaged if they have localizing pain in certain parts of their wrist you can uh, focus your attention on certain ligaments in the wrist. Uh, uh, typically in the emergency room, uh, the emergency room physician uh, gets standard uh, views of the wrist. If, the, uh, uh, if those are normal, then there are spe specific views where you put the wrist in certain positions which can highlight uh, abnormalities in the uh, uh, differences in the location of the small little bones in the wrist. So one of the things that we may do is to get x-rays with the wrist in certain positions which can highlight uh, uh, changes in the position of these small little bones in the wrist. What about advanced imaging such as bone scans or some type of MRI scan or CAT scan? Do you find that those are useful in helping you make a diagnosis? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, not so much bone scans, but uh, MRI uh, scanning uh, is extremely helpful in evaluating the soft tissue anatomy of the wrist. And uh, wrist uh, ligament injuries is the uh, epitome of soft tissue injuries. Uh, the ligaments are uh, small, uh, but discrete and can be seen on MRI and uh, to a trained uh, physician as well as a trained radiologist uh, we can see uh, uh, where uh, ligaments may be injured or torn. Now let's talk a little bit about treatment. We've talked about how complex these injuries are and how many ligaments are in the wrist. Give us some guidance. When you sit down and have a discussion with a patient about this injury what are their options at that point? Uh, conservative care initially is uh, can be an appropriate treatment, uh, immobilization, rest. Uh, uh, if you suspect a ligament injury and uh, the patient doesn't respond to conservative care over the course of a few weeks, then uh, MRI imaging uh, is uh, indicated. If the MRI is, uh, indicates a, a tear or damage to a certain ligament and the patient is unresponsive to conservative care, then uh, depending upon the uh, ligament that is torn, then uh, surgery uh, uh, may be indicated. And the beauty of the wrist as opposed to some of the other joints is that uh, several of these uh, ligament injuries are amenable to being treated uh, through the arthroscope uh, so that uh, large incisions may not be necessary for the treatment of some of these ligament injuries. Well let's talk a little bit about a little more about treatment of these ligament injuries. Are we talking about uh, repairing the ligaments? Are we talking about replacing the ligaments or some other type of surgery that may be used to compensate for the torn ligaments? Well, it, it depends on how chronic the injury is. 
if uh, the patient is treated initially and uh, by a competent uh, uh, hand specialist uh, and uh, 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 surgery is elected, if it is done uh, in a timely fashion, then the ligament can be repaired. If the patient uh, either has not been treated or chooses to ignore the problem uh, for a uh, 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 long period of time, then uh, usually the ligament may not be repairable and the ligament may need to be uh, uh, replaced or a substitute for that ligament may need to be used. And unfortunately, as opposed to other uh, parts of the body, there's no real good substitutes for uh, ligaments in the wrist and you have to use uh, uh, other material to try to reproduce the uh, function of those ligaments. If it is truly left for a very long period of time, then usually arthritis sets in and uh, 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 at that point in time, it's too late to reconstruct the ligament since arthritis is set in, and then other forms of reconstructive surgery to uh, fuse or connect bones together is, is uh, the recommended treatment. Well, I think we should point out to patients that that's a very important point that you just brought up. Anytime we see a joint injury, and it's true for the ankle, for the knee, for the hip, and nearly all other joints, that certain injuries that involve the mechanics of the joint, you may recover from those injuries and not have a lot of pain in the short run. But in the long run, those instabilities lead to increased wear and tear of the joint and can result in arthritis, as you just pointed out. So I think in the wrist, this has been one of the, the particular things that have led us to treat these injuries a little more conservatively and maybe not as aggressively as we should have in the past. A lot of these people will do fine for years. They, they may get over the initial injury. They don't have a lot of pain. They may have some pain with very heavy use, but they just assume that they're okay. The problem is that years later, they develop these patterns of instability that, that you've discussed, and, and that leads to a very, very few options uh, uh, for treatment. We're limited to doing fairly radical procedures like a wrist fusion. That's been my experience, and I would uh, be interested in your opinion on this scenario and whether this has led you to try to treat these uh, injuries more aggressively earlier on. Uh, yes, I would agree with your uh, uh, assessment of the problem. The, the sooner the patient re realizes that he has a problem that isn't going to go away, and, and he shouldn't wait months or years to see if it goes away, he should, should wait a, a um, much more reasonable period of time. And then he should seek treatment from someone who uh, is attuned uh, to the, the complexity of the wrist. Uh, the sooner the patient seeks treatment uh, and a diagnosis is made, the more options the patient has. Uh, if he, the longer he waits, the, the more damage there that's done in, inside the wrist. If a ligament is torn or several ligaments are torn, the bones inside the wrist move abnormally. They therefore, uh, the, the wear and tear on the, on the bones is therefore uh, greatly increased. And when there's more wear and tear on, on the bones, the, the cartilage or the lining of the bone that, that creates the joint uh, wears off and that is the uh, cause of the arthritis which is the end result if you don't treat it. So the sooner you seek treatment the more options you have and the less likely it is that you're going to develop these problems long term. And, and I would agree that, that initially the patient has some pain, uh, the pain uh, subsides to some degree although they still have pain but instead of seeking medical treatment they choose to alter the way they do things and either use one hand or they don't use that hand as much, uh, but uh, the damage continues until they really have a lot of pain and then their choices are very much narrowed. So the, my take-home message is the sooner you seek it, 
seek help, the more options you're going to have for treatment and the more likely it is that you are going to uh, have uh, a normal risk in the end. And that brings up another question. Where do you think we are in terms of surgical treatment of these injuries? I think for, us, for a long time, orthopedic surgeons have worried about the wrist ligament injury and how good our uh, treatment is even when we recommend treatment. Do you think we've made some advances with the arthroscope and with some of the work that you've done that, that we can more effectively treat these acute wrist injuries uh, to the point where we can assume that a patient could have a very good result or even a normal wrist? Is this possible today? I think it is. I think that we've uh, made uh, great strides in our knowledge of uh, what ligaments are torn, uh, what happens when these ligaments are torn, and how to uh, better effectively treat the patient so that they have either a normal or near normal wrist. Uh, have we uh, come to the end where we have the perfect treatment for every single wrist ligament injury? No. But uh, like, like everything else in medicine, what we do today is uh, better than what we did yesterday. Uh, but we're not at the end of the road yet, but we have uh, come a long way as far as treatment from say uh, 15 or 20 years ago. I, I think uh, 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 we have the potential to restore the patient after wrist ligaments to uh, normal or near normal. Well, thank you for that interesting comment. If I can summarize our discussion today, I think over the last 30 years, the view has, tr has changed dramatically. In the hand surgeon's mind, there probably isn't such a thing as a wrist sprain. Sure, we see some patients who have a, a wrist sprain and they, they do get better, but when you have a significant injury that causes pain and swelling that persist, just being told that you don't have a fracture isn't enough. You should explore that diagnosis, understand what injury has occurred and the ramifications of that injury and determine what your treatment options are at that time. I think that our goal, which you and I seem to agree on, is to try to uh, prevent the downstream problems that result from unrecognized ligament injuries. So I want to thank you for this discussion and as we close, I'll, I'll ask is there Anything else that you think patients should know uh, about wrist, li wrist ligament injuries that we haven't discussed today? My, I think my take home point is that uh, uh, don't be satisfied with the fact that your x-rays are quote normal uh, if you still continue to have wrist pain because uh, the technology of a plain x-ray making a diagnosis of a wrist sprain is, uh, uh, isn't an acceptable answer. There's new technology, MRIs, new examinations, which may uh, allow the physician to make a diagnosis. And once a diagnosis is made, uh, a, a plan can be formulated for treating the problem rather than ignoring the problem. I think that's excellent advice and I hope that patients uh, take heed of that advice. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you.